Hello friends, this is Rahul and this time we are covering a video which is cross currency asset swaps and please note that those who are aware about the TRS which is total return swap this is far different than total return swap because total return swap is nothing but when one set of liability would offset with another set of asset or another set of liability would offset with one side of one side of asset this is not total return swap this is cross currency asset swap now what this cross currency asset swap stands at we are taking a similar example when we have a Goldman Sachs who wants it to buy a bond and they are buying from PIMCO and they are buying the bond in dollar terms so the full price which they are paying which is known as the dirty price of the bond which is dirty price equal to clean price plus accrued interest and clean price is nothing but the present value of the bond that they are paying in the dollar terms so they are getting a bond of dollar terms Assuming they are getting is UST, United States Treasury 10 year, which they are getting. On the other hand, they are getting assets of uh, seller. Of course, I will not repeat that uh, this uh, business, uh, if, if uh, government says wanted to keep it amortized, they have to pass as per IFRS 9, let me write here, as per IFRS 9, they have to pass business model test and cash flow test, cash flow characteristics test, right? so that they need to pass now what would happen they are taking a hedge with hsbc in which they are they are paying the price cds price and there's their cds price they are paying in dollar terms while credit service is paying in gbp terms now they are uh, that dollar coupon they are returning that they are paying to credit service and credit service is paying in gbp libor plus qsd now you must be thinking that why GS is doing that because GS is having a floating income in dollar but they have a floating liability in GBP on the other hand this person would have a floating income in GBP and, and he, he need a floating income in dollar so they would offset each other basically I'll repeat GS would have a fixed income in dollar but they have a floating liability in GBP while CS will have a floating income in GBP, but they have a fixed liability in dollar. So they will quack, uh, they will crawl, they will swap each other. And of course, this risk, floating risk, they will take. Now, in the earlier cases, we not discussed this step, but now we are going to discuss this because this is a cross currency asset swap. In a cross currency asset swap, you know, Goldman Sachs needs to take all these three forms of hedging. POS is principal only swap. When you are hedging the principal, COS is coupon only swap when you are hedging the coupon and cross currency interest rate swap is nothing POS plus COS. And suppose if default won't happen then asset swap will continue to generate either fixed or floating or uh, and this would continue if default happen then, the, then as per the agreement between GS and HSBC either it could be payment obligation or reference obligation payment obligation means dollar terms reference or reference obligation means in uh, notes term in basically uh, reference obligation means i would say uh, in the in the form of a notes or government security something like that right now if this would happen then gs will wind up this and credit suisse uh, will not pay because GS have to pay the money and they will do mark to market settlement of course mark to market settlement would be L1, L2, L3 and here we are talking about cross currency interest rate so a cross currency asset swap in a cross currency asset swap L1, L2 is very rare if we have, you have to go to L3 this is how it happens I repeat you have a party Goldman Sachs who is buying a bond from PIMCO they are buying in dollar terms, assuming they are buying 10 year USD, 10 year United States Treasuries. Then you have one party which is GS, which is Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is having a fixed dollar income but floating GBP liability. And they would have a fixed GBP income but a floating liability, a floating dollar liability. They swap each other. Don't think that this is a kind of TRS. This is not a total return swap. That is simple. Because in the total, total return swap, it is not fixed to float. It is only uh, total return swap is, is nothing enjoying an asset without owing it right but this is not like that here you are taking a CDS position and that CDS position you are paying in dollar that CDS position it could be reference obligation or payment obligation 
if if it is a payment obligation it would be in dollar term if it would be a reference obligation it would be in the notes term and if it is going to default it hsbc will do hsbc will do either of that and there would there would be a mark to market settlement that mark to market settlement would would come in the uh, would would settle this and of course the floating risk which goldman sachs is paying that floating risk is needs to be covered either principal only swap coupon only swap or cross currency interested swap i repeat principal only swap cover principal coupon only swap cover coupon cross currency interested swap cover pos plus cos this is for today when we covered the cross currency asset swap with hedging and believe me this is a very important title to understand if you have any query you can come to us www.treasuryconsulting.in our mobile is 9899242978 my skype id is rahul5327 my email is rahul.magan@treasuryconsulting.in thank you and have a wonderful time ahead